Welcome. I am really impressed by how many people are here today. We even have a service dog. That's the first time I've seen that here. So excited to have you all here with us tonight. Welcome to Sweat for Your Brain, which is this, this segment is also known as Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body. Uh, it's hosted by St. Luke's, but in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association. Here at St. Luke's, we are very focused on improving the health of our communities. That includes everyone who is aging. We're all going to age. Um, and so we're all very thankful to have the Alzheimer's Association here as a partner with us to help us promote how to age in a healthy way, keep our brains healthy through exercise, healthy eating, and other ways. Um, so we're all gonna get there eventually. So here's um, some great information here tonight to help you learn how to do that. Um, we have a lot of you here in person, which is awesome to see. We also have some people joining us online, um, virtually through WebEx. Um, so thank you all for joining us. My name is Monica Wolberg. I am a representative of community outreach here at St. Luke's. I'm also joined by Alexis Walker of the Alzheimer's Association. She'll be presenting to you tonight, as well as Glory Zinho. She's in the back, but she'll be coming up front. She's a dietitian here at St. Luke's Hospital as well. Just a brief introduction on both of them. Alexis is a clinical research coordinator conducting Alzheimer's research in the neurology department at Washington University School of Medicine. Under the direction of Dr. Ganesh Babulal, sorry if I said that incorrectly, she works as the lead coordinator for ARCHES, a pioneering research study examining the impact of social and systemic conditions on Alzheimer's risk within the black community. She received her bachelor's degree in cognitive neuroscience and African and American studies from Washington University in May of 2021. She has a strong passion for making healthcare accessible and equitable for all. Glory Zinos, who now is up here in the front, is a diabetes educator and wellness coordinator in community outreach for St. Luke's Hospital. She's a registered dietitian, a certified diabetes care and education specialist. She obtained her nutrition degree in Argentina and her master's degree in science and dietetics from Loyola University in Chicago. Glories has worked in a variety of settings and populations, always focused on health promotion and disease prevention. For the last 10 years, she's been a part of St. Luke's and she continues to keep our community up to date with clinical findings and new flavors. So some great experts here tonight to share this information with you. It's just a couple housekeeping items before we get started. We will have a question and answer segment at the end. So if you could hold your questions until the end, we'll take as many as we can from the audience. For those of you who are attending online, you can enter your questions into the Q&A um, and we'll grab those as time permits. And also at the end of the session, all of you who registered to attend in person um, will have your name entered into a drawing. Schnooks, um, there is a partner with us today. They have, uh, they have some coupons, which many of you have seen. Glorious was handing those out earlier. Um, they've also donated a gift basket. So we'll be raffling that off at the end as well. Um, and then we'll sample some of the great food that Glorious is going to show us how to prepare tonight. So, Without any more introductions or delay, I will hand it off to Alexis. All right, good evening, everyone. All right, good evening, everybody. So uh, it's great to see all of you all here. I love a, a, a large crowd, so I'm excited to see so many of you all here to join us for Sweat for Your Brain. Um, so today we'll be talking about healthy living for your brain and body. So um, welcome to this Alzheimer's Association discussion. Um, we'll talk about tips from latest research um, in this program. And this program is designed to offer you research-based recommendations about taking care of your brains and our bodies in order to age as well as possible. Um, so as a note, this program is intended for those um, who are healthy and are looking for ways to age well. If you have concerns about your memory or thinking, you can feel free to give um, a call to our Alzheimer's Association 24-7 helpline, which I will put up on the screen a little bit later in our talk. And there's also some magnets out in the hallway with that number as well. So. Without further ado, we're going to go over learning objectives. So essentially what you should walk away with in this presentation. So one, we want to identify the reasons for taking care of yourself as you age, list strategies to age well in the following areas, physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, 
cognitive activity, and social engagement. Um, so you all, if you didn't have a chance to, on the table just outside, there was a two-page document um, that you can kind of follow along with. There are seven main sections within the document. We're gonna cover um, an overall four, because this is a shortened version, um, but some of the uh, different categories kind of combine into one. So follow along where possible, take notes, write down your questions, but that's for you to take home. And if anyone does not have one, try to flag one of us down and we can give you one. Okay. So, first we're gonna talk to you about um, aging well and how it, how it depends on your genes, environment, and lifestyle. So when we think about aging, there are certain components that we all kind of share and have in common. So typically as you get older, you start to gray or gray starts to show up in your hair and your beard. Your vision might go out. You may not be able to see as well, hear as well. Um, folks begin to have wrinkles, so that's kind of across the board. Um, there are certain things that are determined by your genes and your family. So for some folks, they live well into their 90s or in their 100s, whereas others have certain diseases that they're more predisposed to um, that cause them to uh, pass earlier than the average. And then there's also the lifestyle component, so things that are within your control. So what you eat, how you exercise, uh, the way you sleep, your mental health, if you're smoke free, things like that. So today we'll talk a little bit more about lifestyle choices and how they may keep your body and brain healthy. So first we're just gonna give a quick overview about the brain. Um, we're from the Alzheimer's Association, so we're all about the brain. So as a general overview, the brain is the control center of the body. There are about 100 billion nerve cells or neurons creating a branching network. So to put that in kind of context for you, um, the world population just crossed the 8 billion mark in November of last year. So we have 100 billion neurons in our brain. That's a lot. So signals traveling through the brain from, for memories, thoughts, and feelings. Alzheimer's disease specifically destroys those brain cells. So you may start with, that, with those 100 billion, but with Alzheimer's disease, that number starts to dwindle. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the heart-brain connection. So the heart and the brain are interrelated. What you do to protect your heart can also help protect um, your brain and continue to operate at its best. So the brain needs blood flow. The brain depends on oxygen and adequate blood flow to work well. And 25% of blood from every heartbeat goes to your brain. So now we'll talk specifically about Alzheimer's and dementia. So to give you a bit of an overview and a definition of what we'll get into. So dementia is caused by many different diseases and conditions and is not a part of normal aging. So if you take anything away from what I'm saying on this slide, Dementia and Alzheimer's is not a part of normal aging. Um, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. It accounts for about 60 to 80% of cases. For a lot of people, the idea of dementia and Alzheimer's gets pretty easily conflated. I like to think of dementia as kind of like cancer. So dementia is the overall umbrella term, but there are different types of cancer. There's breast cancer, bone cancer, throat cancer, same with dementia. Dementia is the overarching umbrella term, and there's different types of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease, uh, dementia with Lewy bodies, frontal temporal dementia, um, and so on. So risks for Alzheimer's and dementia include age, genetics, head injury, cardiovascular factors, and fewer years of formal education. Therapies for Alzheimer's can treat symptoms for a time, but they cannot cure or prevent or even slow the disease progression. Okay, so now we're gonna cover a little bit about taking care of yourself as you age. So as I mentioned, we're gonna go over these four major components, cognitive activity, physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, and social engagement. So we'll look at what most current research tells us about changes we can make in each of these areas that can help our bodies and our brains age as well as possible. As we touch on each area, think about how you can apply this research in your own life. Consider how you can do what you enjoy, make gradual changes, start now regardless of your age. So whenever possible, think about how you can make changes that affect more than just one area at a time. Essentially try to kill two birds with one stone. If you can find a way to connect cognitive activity and physical health and exercise, do it. You're knocking out two out of the four right there. 
So first we'll start by exploring the areas of physical health and exercise. So here's what we know. Cardiovascular activity may reduce your risk of cognitive decline. Um, regular and vigorous exercise leads to increased blood flow. Other physical activities may also yield benefits. There is no single recipe for brain health. So essentially, we just want you up and moving, um, but up and moving in a way that's comfortable and safe for you. So if you're someone that has never run a marathon before, don't decide to run a marathon. Um, if you're someone who's never been a, a weightlifter, don't try to lift the heaviest weight in the gym. Um, do things that are comfortable for you. I know my grandma got into chair yoga recently. Um, so finding things that are easy for you to do, um, things that you can stick with is what's important. So we'll start by exploring the area of physical exercise. Um, and here's what we can do. So start with something you like. Start out small. Of course, move safely. We don't want to cause more injury. Get your heart rate up. Ask friends to join you. So that kind of throws in that social element as well. And then check with your doctor before you start. So making sure that whatever you're trying to start doing is safe for you in your state currently. So many studies indicate that engaging in physical activity is associated with lower risk of cognitive decline. So many researchers say that if people had to choose one thing to improve their brain functioning, it should be exercise. Some evidence suggests that exercise may directly benefit brain cells by increasing blood and oxygen flow and by reducing other dementia risk factors like high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Of course, there is no single recipe for what works best for you. Um, most researchers believe exercise should be regular and on the more vigorous side. So something that gets your heart rate up, gets you sweating a little bit, but other studies have shown benefits from mild activity, such as walking. So finding alternatives. If you're someone that parks closer to the front door at the grocery store, maybe park a couple spots away so that you have to walk a little bit farther. Things like that, just adding pieces in your life to make it easier to get up and moving. Additionally, here are some other things that we can do. Stop smoking, avoid excess alcohol, get adequate sleep. So I know that first section on that page we gave you talks about getting good sleep. Avoid head injury, manage stress, treat depression, and visit your doctor regularly. So a couple of these things are important to know because if you don't have your numbers under control or certain things like depression under control, it can mimic dementia. So for some people, if they have depression and it's not managed well, they might have some memory decline. Um, and it's not due to dementia, but because of the depression. So it's important to have all of these things in check to ensure that you're as healthy as possible. Um, in addition, as far as getting adequate sleep, finding things that help you sleep well, comfortably, and you're getting quality sleep. If you're just in bed for eight hours with your eyes closed and you're not getting any good sleep, that's not quality. So it's important to do what you can to get quality sleep for you. So what can we do? Monitor numbers and take action. So again, checking your blood pressure, blood sugar, weight, and cholesterol, and making sure that all of that is under control. So as far as diet and nutrition, um, and Glorice is the expert on this, so she'll have more to say about this later. So what we know is what's good for your heart may also be good for your brain. Nutritious food is fuel for the brain. Following some dietary guidelines can reduce your risk of heart disease, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, stroke, and diabetes. So what can you do? You can eat things like vegetables, fruits, nuts, beans, and whole grains, lean meats, fish and poultry, and vegetable oils. Avoid saturated or trans fats, processed foods, solid fat, sugar and salt, deep fried foods, and unhealthy fast foods. So go back into your brain about the food pyramid that you probably saw plastered across elementary school um, and think about that, those kinds of things. So um, eating your veggies and fruits and staying away from more processed foods and um, excess sugar. In regard to cognitive activity, it's important to keep your mind active, form new connections among brain cells. Cognitive activity encourages blood flow in the brain. Mentally stimulating activities may possibly maintain or even improve cognition. Engaging in formal education will keep your brain healthy and can provide protection against developing dementia. So what can we do about it? You can read books and articles that challenge and inspire you, complete puzzles and play games that are challenging for you, 
learn new skills or hobbies, engage in ongoing learning. So some of the key words I'd like to point out on this screen are challenge, challenge, and new. So it's important that the activities you're doing are challenging you and are new to you. So if you're someone that likes to do, um, let's say, Sudoku puzzles, maybe you've been doing the easy ones. Try the harder ones, the moderate ones, ones that require you to think, that require you to write and scribble and erase the numbers because you're not quite sure if that's where it goes. Um, or you can try a new skill you've always wanted to try. Maybe you were interested in learning a new language. There are tons of apps and videos now that we all have access to because of the internet where you can learn skills that you may not have had access to before. You could also engage in some local community um, college or uh, courses where you can learn a new skill, um, get a new course credit, or just get some new things under your belt. So it's important that we're challenging ourselves and gaining new skills. Um, in addition, if you're someone that likes to play an instrument, learn a new song on that instrument or learn an instrument adjacent to that instrument. Um, so uh, lots of new things that you can get involved in. Lastly, social engagement. So social engagement is associated with living longer with fewer disabilities. Staying engaged in community offers you an opportunity to maintain your skills. Remaining both socially and mentally active may support brain health and possibly delay the onset of dementia. So what can we do? You can visit with friends and family, engage with others, stay involved in the community, volunteer outside of your home, or join a group or club. So doing all of these things, like you all are here today, you're out being social, going to an event, um, hopefully meeting some new people, and engaging in an activity you may not have done before. Um, so a lot of these things we can kind of combine. So in the aspect of joining a group or a club, um, you can join a dance class. I know for myself, a couple months ago, I started taking a line dance class. I am by far the youngest person in the class, but I enjoy it. It's a good time. I get to socialize, I get to dance, I get to learn new dances, um, and I get to have a community with people that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, I managed to go to an event on Saturday for, um, it's an event called Black Girl Recess. It happened at the Arch Riverfront, and it was just a bunch of people doing double dutch, hopscotch, yoga, dancing, um, all on the riverfront. And I would have never known about it had I not been in this line dance class. So I'm exposing myself to something that's getting my heart rate up. Um, I'm socializing with people. I'm staying connected with folks that are older than me. So ensuring that whatever dances they have, they're passing them on to me and I can pass them on to folks younger than me. Um, I went home last weekend and I was teaching my sisters who were like 11 and 12 how to do these dances. So um, it's a great time to find things that you enjoy, things that you like to do, um, and things that you can keep up with. I know for myself, finding me in a gym, you never will. So, but line dancing was something that kept me active um, and I enjoyed doing. So how do we put all four of these pieces together? So kind of what I was talking about earlier, take care of your health, get moving, eat right, keep your mind active and stay connected with others. Combine all four to achieve maximum benefits. So again, finding ways where you can kind of kill two birds with one stone, finding two subcategories to work together. So for example, in the um, example of doing the line dance class, I'm getting that physical exercise and the social engagement. Um, you all being here today, you're getting that diet and nutrition information on how to create a meal that's healthy for you while also being present with a bunch of other folks. So again, getting that social engagement. Um, if you are a part of a bridge group, you're getting that cognitive activity and social engagement. So ways to just get all of these different parts and pieces working together at the same time so you don't feel like you're you know, overexerting yourself. So what can you do now? It's never too late. You can begin today, you can start small and build again, don't start with the marathon, start with the walk. So start small, do what you enjoy, and stick with it. It's important to build habits. Make healthy choices, make a plan, um, and get support from others. Sometimes it's useful to have an accountability partner, whether that's your spouse, a good friend of yours, your child, your cousin, whoever. Someone that is there with you from the end and has a similar goal. Um, so if you came here today with your spouse, you already did that. You have an accountability partner. Um, you've got someone that can look out for you and ensure that you're making healthy choices. And then most importantly is have fun. 
Don't do anything you hate. Don't eat a food that you don't like simply because it looks good calorie-wise. Eat it because you enjoy it and it's good for you. Um, so we don't want to, you know, be the Debbie Downers and give you stuff you don't like or tell you to do things you don't like to do. Do things that you enjoy doing. So, and if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. So as far as consuming what's out there, be cautious when you hear huge promises or reports of miracle cures. Do thorough research for yourself. The Alzheimer's Association is a great place to start. They um, provide um, email updates if you subscribe to their emailing list about what's going on in current research, things that you should know about the association and the disease, um, and just generally there are tons of free research resources where you can find information about all the things that we're talking about today. Also, consult trusted, reputable professionals. So start with your doctor, your local pharmacist, and then of course the Alzheimer's Association. Ensure that whatever you're doing or what you're starting to do doesn't conflict with your lifestyle currently and makes you more unhealthy if possible. So as far as your local pharmacist, ensuring that what you're doing activity-wise doesn't conflict with medications you're currently taking um, or you're not over-medicating or under-medicating and ensuring everything you're doing is completely safe for you. So now here are just a few resources from the Alzheimer's Association. So one, we have our 24-7 helpline. So in this top right corner is the 800 number. So 800-272-3900. You can also go to the website, alz.org. You can also go to our community resource finder, which is alz.org slash CRF. Or you can just navigate um, to that via just the normal website. You can also do ALZ Connected and Alzheimer's Navigator. So all of these resources are there for you if you have no concerns about dementia and you just are curious and want to know more. They're for folks that have been diagnosed with dementia or some form of Alzheimer's, or Alzheimer's disease um, and just want to know more. Caregivers, those who take care of someone living with the disease, and literally everyone in between. So if you ever have any questions, concerns, or want follow-up on what we've talked about today, the website and the helpline are a great place to start. All right. I think that's it. Any questions? Yes, sir. You're concerned about dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, would it be better to call the 800 number or go to your primary doctor? So I think they're both good places to start. So if you have um, certain questions about things that you might want to be mindful of, so like warning signs, I think the 800 number is a good place to start. But again, if you have a trusted physician, someone that you go to regularly and you see often, I think that's another great place to start because they know specifically what's going on with you. So your cholesterol numbers, blood pressure, things like that. So I think both of them are really good uh, places to start. Okay. Of course. Yes, ma'am. Well, Sure. So the question was, um, for the resource finder, are there resources for folks that need like short-term caregiving? So if you need to step out, someone to stay at home and watch the relative. Um, so there are tons of resources like that on here as well. So there is financial, legal, caretaking resources on there. If you put in your zip code, it gives you a list of local places that can provide um, support for you. There's also links to AARP, which can also provide additional resources. Um, but there's absolutely places for caretaking, whether it's part-time, full-time, whatever you need. Yes, ma'am. Sure. <coughs> So when it comes to vitamins or um, medications like Prevagen, um, they tend to be like over the counter and the FDA, they're not technically FDA approved. Therefore, they can't guarantee that they will improve your memory thinking or things like that. So um, 
It's hard to say. It's really up to you and what you're comfortable with as long as your, your doctor's okay with it and you're fine with taking it, but there's really no guarantee that it'll help you since it's not FDA approved and it's not something that they, they can prescribe. Your organization hasn't done any studies, just these. I'm not sure if we've specifically done anything that looks at Prevagen, but as far as I know, um, if it's not something that's been approved by like you know the Food and Drug Administration, it's not something that can be guaranteed to help you. Okay, and my other question has to do with women and bladder infections. Sure. This was in the news mm -hmm. quite a while ago that when women start having mental problems, they should go to their physician and get yes. a bladder Yes, so if, you have, if you're having some sort of unknown, you know, memory decline or, um, behavioral changes, sometimes it's a result of a UTI or a urinary tract infection. Um, so getting that checked out to make sure that that's not a reason why you're having those memory changes. So again, going back to making sure that you're healthy, having your numbers checked, um, making sure there's no infections or no other causes, um, and kind of weeding out anything that isn't dementia. So that great question. Yes. Oh, go ahead. So I'm um, very interested in this. Dementia is not uh, part of normal aging. Mm -hmm. I think most people think it is part sure. of aging. Mm -hmm. So what, do you, what is it that causes dementia? Well, I know you're not going to answer that question because you're not a nurse. But are you saying that all of the things that you list, like food, head trauma, depression, all play a role? Isn't genetics a really So there are main factors or risk factors that impact your risk for dementia and Alzheimer's. The biggest one is age. So folks who are 65 and older are at a greater risk of dementia compared to those who are not. Um, those who are 80 and up, it's about one in three. So one in three folks will have some form of dementia. It's a very daunting number, I understand. Um, but there are things that play a role in impact risk. So lifestyle being one of them. Um, genetics plays a role, but not as largely as it does for um, age. So if your parent had it or a sibling had it, um, then you're at a higher risk, but not higher than if you were 65 and up. Um, that's usually more so the case for early onset Alzheimer's. So if you've ever known someone or heard of someone that had it prior to 65, that is more so impacted by family history and genetics. So I think we're going to move on to the food segment next. We can take all the everybody's questions at the end. So if you have any more, please hold on to them so that we can give Gloris a chance to present the food segment, and then we'll we'll continue on from there. So Gloris, if you're ready. Okay, well, welcome. I'm so happy to be here uh, just because I don't think we've had so many people in house in a while and COVID changed a lot of things and I'm glad that we're out here and that you took the time to join us to learn and raise awareness about Alzheimer's disease and improving lifestyle is probably something that no matter how old you are is worth spending some time. And I think a good segue uh, to present you the food component. Uh, today is not going to be a nutrition lecture because we can probably talk about food for a very long time. Um, it's hopefully a, um, it's an overview of how important uh, your daily choices are. And as Alexis mentioned, building habits is sometimes challenging. And as we get older and every life cycle, but particularly when we're seniors, um, things change physiologically in our body, but then also our habits. Right, I'm not retired yet, but I hear a lot how different transitions in life have made people uh, either much better at self-care or not so good at self-care. So becoming familiar uh, and f befriending the kitchen, because this is what I hear a lot. Oh, I retired, my kids are gone, I'm not stepping in the kitchen anymore. Um, your taste buds change, uh, your digestive system changes, your toler tolerance for different foods. So this is a really important part um, of your daily 
planning and part of your self-care. I want you to think of your food choices and your beverage cho choices in the level of a self-care action. Because we eat as the main reason to bring nourishment to our body, correct? Now, raise your hand if you're thinking of that nourishing opportunity. Most times you put something in your mouth. I see maybe two or three hands, okay? So there's no judgment here, but most of the time we're operating really busy, very distracted with a lot of things. Uh, we hyper-focus on the wrong thing. We don't have time uh, for anything, yet we can spend a lot of time doing nothing or nothing productive. So I wanna invite you to think about your relationship with food. Think about how you are purchasing, how you are preparing or not preparing maybe, uh, what in your list of foods, uh, where are you going to most often? Uh, there is a very large body of evidence that points to the connection between nutrition and lifestyle, uh, quality of life. We know that out of the 10 top leading causes of death uh, in the United States, seven of them are related to nutrition. So heart disease, number one, uh, stroke, so all of those. We have Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, cancer. So really paying attention to your nutrition sources at this time of your life is almost as important as a nutrition of when you're a little tiny baby and you're developing and growing. Now your nutrition sources are gonna ensure that you're repairing and rebuilding tissue and that your immune system is well equipped to be able to fight disease. When we get older, all of the decay happens as soon as you're born, uh, but 65 and older is a time in which you wanna prioritize the quality of your nutrition sources. So what evidence points to is the Mediterranean diet. The more vegetarian or plant-based your diet, the healthier it is for us because it is naturally loaded with anti-inflammatory elements and um, it uh, is, provides all of the nutrients that are required for, for your body. On the opposite hand, we have the standard American diet that it is delicious, but unfortunately so is loaded with too many additives that are part of the cause of why we have so many health issues now. So the standard American diet is character characterized by highly processed foods that are filled with refined carbohydrates, a lot of plant of animal-based protein sources. We love bacon for breakfast with eggs and a little butter on our toast. We love cream and coffee. And lunch, why not do a nice sandwich as this tall with many layers of cheese and many layers of different types of cold cuts. And if you're lucky, maybe some lettuce and tomato in there, right? Uh, and a cookie, why not? And why not a soda, right? The bigger the better, 32 ounces for a dollar. And then comes dinner. What's the most wholesome comfort food when we get home for dinner? What do you like? Yeah, I'm pointing to you. Oh, well, good, and I point to you because I'm going to be gender biased here. Men like meat and potatoes, right? Us ladies like our home uh, comforting foods too, but usually uh, it's very easy to come across these foods that are not necessarily the ones that we need to focus. So the idea of the Mediterranean diet or of an anti-inflammatory diet, which helps reduce the risk of inflammatory diseases such as dementia, Alzheimer, heart disease, or diabetes is to eat predominantly plant-based foods and be very, very focused, okay? And looking where those added sugars, added fat, added salt with all the added chemical colorings that make that food so yummy and crunchy that you can just um, nom, 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 eat, eat, eat with no fillness, right? So uh, food has a chemical response physiologically in your body. So paying more attention at discriminating which foods are ultra highly processed foods from the less processed foods is a very easy way to look at your refrigerator and your pantry and start transitioning out of 
consuming so many ultra processed foods. And with that comes the connection of inflammation with disease, um, sweet or sugar sweet beverages are probably the biggest threat to us. About uh, 13 to 15% of our daily calories as Americans are coming from sweet beverages. So if you're already skipped that part, yay, you've come a long way, but added sugars and added fat and added salt are everywhere. So coming prepared to the store and making sure that you're organizing a meal plan that fits your nutrition needs and your goals is very, very important. Most of the time, we just eat when we get hungry because we saw something that was appetizing or because somebody offered. That's called mindless eating. My advice to you is just to be more deliberate and make choices that are aligned with your values, with your taste buds, and with the things that you're trying to achieve. Medical nutritional therapy works very well when the person does it. Like any diet you've read out there, as long as you are able to sustain it in time, that's what's gonna be successful. If you're trying to do a diet that's too crazy or really far away from who you are, it's not gonna work. So common sense is your best friend. Food is nourishment to the body. Beverages are intended to hydrate. So the cleaner they are, the less added things to them, the better for you. Are you ready to do this recipe demo? Okay, so today I'm going to be sampling a recipe. The recipe that I'm going to show you briefly, I'm gonna introduce the ingredients and some of the nutrition highlights of each ingredient. Um, after we're done with the presentation, we're gonna take some questions and we're gonna invite you to taste a sample of a quinoa salad uh, as you leave today's pr um, program. The salad that you will be sampling is not gonna be the same as this one. Uh, it was prepared at the Eat Well market by schnooks and it's slightly different it's missing out some of these greens but I hope that if you didn't eat dinner before coming this little teaser of a salad will like enlighten you to go home and want to like really explore your refrigerator and your pantry if you already ate dinner maybe this salad will have a slightly different experience because then you we will not as hungry, you can pay more attention to what's going on in your tongue, right? So I'm gonna invite you to explore textures and flavors because eating should be fun and enjoyful. Did you hear me? If you're afraid of food, you're going at it wrong. Lucky and grateful if you have food in front of you. Just be more thoughtful and deliberate of making sure it's going to give you lots of nourishment. And this is why we want you, the pillar of eating healthy is lots of fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods. So in this recipe that we're going to do today, the quinoa or quinoa is considered an Asian grain. This is what it looks like when it's dry, okay? It's like rice or any other grain. It cooks very easily like any other grain. You boil water and it's done. Today's recipe, I made it on the microwave. Even better, 15 minutes of a ratio of one cup of quinoa to two cups of water will give you about two and a half cups of cooked quinoa. It's considered a whole grain, it's better than rice or pasta because it has a lot more protein and it has a lot of other micronutrients like vitamins and minerals that make it a super food, okay? If you like brown rice, do whatever you like. Variety is what's key to keep food fun and engagement, okay? Try new foods, you may not like it once, try it again, you might just find that you do like it. So quinoa, you rinse it under cold water to make sure any um, debris that might have been left over in processing is removed. You put it two to one ratio of water in the stove or in the microwave and voila, it's done. You don't need to strain it, you fluff it up with a fork. It's very plain flavored, it has nothing. So the idea of what you pair it up with is what's gonna give it flavor.
So summer is here. I'm going to show you a salad. Uh, but quinoa or quinoa can be used for many, many different dishes. It could be used for uh, chili. It could be used for breakfast. It could be used as a side dish. Or it could be used as a meal on itself. What will make a salad a meal is making sure that it has enough what? Protein. And where do we find protein? Meat. Yes. Fish. So obviously egg, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. So try to stay away from chicken and beef and turkey or ham because we know those very well. Boil egg. We know that very well. Explore with some canned or baked or already frozen fish, OK? It's a great way not only to add a good quality protein, but what else do we have in seafood? Omega-3 fatty acids. So part of the key for brain health is to make sure that for overall health, anti-inflammatory, it requires healthier fats. And healthier fats we will find in seafood and we will find naturally occurring in nuts and seeds. There's nothing wrong with our animal cow, pork, chicken, that's okay, but we do those very well all the time. Let's venture out and introduce newer foods. Plus, they tend to be much lower in saturated fat, and plant-based foods are cholesterol-free. So all the other benefits. That's why we say heart healthy, it talks about your vascular system, not just your heart. So if there's less clogging things or sticky things like fat or sugar in your vascular system, your brain is going to be much better nourished, OK? So fish as protein. And I'm showing you here beans. I had these at my house, OK? So chickpeas, chickpeas or um, lentils or white beans, black beans, whatever you like. Making beans, depending on the bean, can be super easy, like boiling them, or sometimes you have to soak them and put them on the crock pot. You can also buy them canned. Canned is convenient and affordable. If you can buy varieties that are with no sodium or low sodium, even better. If not, you're going to wash the can so there's no cross-contamination when you open. You're going to drain and rinse the bean. You can get rid of about 30% of that added sodium in the liquid. So what matters is to eat more plant-based foods. Fresh, wonderful. Frozen, oh, easy peasy if you're a single home or if you don't want to cook or if you have issues handling utensils, buy frozen, already chopped vegetables. You can keep them on the freezer and scoop out the amount that you need. Now they also offer at stores already chopped onions, bell peppers, carrots, so it can simplify how you're going to add things to your recipes. Um, I also brought here as a protein source an example of edamame beans. These are frozen. They're used in many, many food products. They have a great flavor and texture uh, that added to a salad or to whatever other meal, it can bring a good quality amount of protein. And oh my gosh, this is the difference of protein. One ounce of any meat okay, has about seven grams of protein. And here we go, a uh, half a cup of edamame beans. Oh my gosh, nine grams of protein. <gasps> and it's more in volume. And oh look, eight grams of fiber. And no fat, OK? And no cholesterol, and just very little sodium that's naturally occurring. Because when I look at the ingredients, soybeans, <laughs> OK? And this was probably $2. I don't know how much the pound of beef is right now, but it's very pricey. So why I'm telling you this, whatever rocks your boat, find intrinsic motivation. So if money is one of them, if you have a food budget and you're looking at food costs, eating healthy does not mean more money. You just need to be wiser at how you're shopping. Um, if you care for the environment, oh gosh, eat more plant-based food is going to be the friendliest to it, the environment. So protein sources can come in very different ways. Uh, and lastly, and deliciously, what do I have here? 
Slivered roasted almonds. Oh, so raw and roasted will give you different flavors. If you have issue with chewing anything that's slivered or say this is already, oh my gosh, processed food. It has been chopped, it has been cut. But this is an example of a good choice for a moderately processed food. So adding nuts will give crunch to your meal is also a great source of protein, fiber, and those healthy fats that we need. So this recipe is going to be the bed of whatever greens you like. Baby spinach, kale, arugula, the darker the green, the more the nutrition. But if you don't like it, just eat whatever greens you like or mix them up. Uh, kale, for example, can be bitter. So there's different techniques that you can use, like giving it a massage when you're cleaning it, taking the stem to kind of reduce some of that bitterness. Uh, but you begin with a big load of green leafy vegetables. Elephants and gorillas, guess what they eat? Yeah, right? And they can like keep up the huge muscle mass. So a lot of greens. Uh, we will have this recipe. It's mixing in some blueberries. So any type of fruit that you add to a salad will bring a little bit of that tangy and vitamin C. The berry family has been obviously studied and researched. And we know it has really positive protective effects for brain health. So it also gives me a natural sugar. Okay, uh, I'm going to um, use also what I purchased is uh, shredded slaw. You can also get broccoli slaw. It already has carrots. I was just simplifying my time today. But the more vegetable you add to it is also crunchy and colorful. Eating a variety of colors is pretty and appetizing, but also it will give you a wide variety of different nutrients. Uh, anything that is um, going to have um, vitamins, we call those antioxidants, vitamins and minerals, have that natural protective effect of reducing inflammation. So do you see how difficult this is? This is one cup of cooked quinoa. Okay, I'm gonna dump it, and I'm gonna show you how to make the salad dressing. Because this is one of the things that is super easy to do. And when you purchase it, this is how, if you look at the ingredients, it'll be very long. Some things you can recognize, and then many other names you won't be able to recognize. Those are chemicals. So for a good salad dressing, you're always going to need a good fat base. So olive oil uh, is what's most helpful and recommended. But any type of vegetable oil that you like, you would do. They have different flavors. So uh, I have a hope you don't want to come to my kitchen. But you have also, for example, I brought some sesame oil. There's avocado oil. Uh, there's walnut oil. They're not all used for the same things, but they bring you different flavors. And it's an easy way with a little bit to bring some of those omega-3 fatty acids or new flavors into a preparation. Um, if you're cooking, the idea is to minimize the amount of added fat to food. So using a spray or no fat at all is wonderful. Um, we are used to dressing our salads with something. So uh, the base of my dressing today, and I have the recipe outside, is olive oil. And it will always be combined with an acid. So vinegar is the most common one. But using lemon juice or, oh gosh, I don't know if you've ever done a salad with orange juice, freshly squeezed, brings it such a delicious flavor to it. Uh, today I just brought this um, rice vinegar as an example. There are too many varieties to check from. They're all different, they're all good. The key is when you're looking at the ingredients, okay, that is no sodium and there's no sugar. Uh, balsamic vinegar, reduced balsamic, they're delicious. Those are reduced and they will have sugar in them. That's okay, but what you're gonna do is use a measuring spoon so you're putting just the right amount. When it's a plain vinegar, it's very har uh, harmless. It brings a lot of flavor uh, to, to a salad or to a marinade or to any type of steamed vegetable. And depending on the variety you use, a different flavor will have, OK? So for this recipe, for the salad dressing, if you have a little mason jar, oh, wow, OK? Uh, you are going to measure how much oil and my recipe I'm not going to use the recipe because it makes an entire cup. And I, you could save this 
in the refrigerator, okay, for a week or more, depending what you're adding to the um, to the salad dressing. But you always use measuring utensils when you're adding fat, when you're adding seasonings that have salt, when you're adding sweeteners. That's when you want to be very, very careful and using a measuring tool. Cooking is an art form. Have you heard this? So you can have a lot of fun with it. Baking is not, so I do not recommend that you venture out your own recipe. This little device can really help you juice without any seeds. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so it takes the juice of two lemons. I like my things really lemony, and this is the thing why cooking is an art form. You can change recipes up with whatever you have in your kitchen or whatever you like or dislike. I'm just gonna leave it at one juice because these are really juicy. And then, for example, I love garlic, but not everybody loves it. And some people like it, but their digestive system don't like it. So you could choose to add it or not. If you add the whole carv garlic clove in it, or in this case, I bought, pur I purchased already minced garlic so I can keep it in the refrigerator. If you just let it sit in the preparation, or if you just let it sit in the oil, it will give the flavor of the garlic to the oil, but you're not necessarily eating it. So oftentimes it's better digestive or it may not have you know, that aftertaste that bothers you, and it gives you a lot of flavor. I, I have fresh herbs here from my garden. If I had dry herbs, I could put them in my uh, dressing, or I could just put the fresh herb in it. It will last long, uh, less when I add fresh to the, um, to the container. But basically this is lemon, garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper that we're not putting because it's not necessary. If you like spicy, you could. And let me see if I'm adding it. Oh, okay. And a little bit, and I don't have it, but you will put maybe a little bit of honey. When you add just a little tiny bit of sweet into this mixture, it will help bring all of the dunami taste and the flavors. So the beauty of the salad dressing, and you can have so many varieties that you wish, of the container is that you put your part of oil, your two parts of, and then, and it's done. Right, no chemicals, no salt added, and it lasts in your refrigerator and will probably cost you very, very little. Uh, you can have different infused oils with different things. If you like hot, you can put a nice dry chili pepper or as I mentioned, any type of herb. So when the salad is ready, the salad, the greens you would add last if you're gonna keep it home and serving it for dinner, you can put some of the salad dressing on the quinoa prior so the flavors build in or get absorbed into the quinoa or you mix it up as you go. If you put vinegar on greens, what happens? They welt. So depending on how you're gonna be using this recipe, um, you can season your quinoa ahead of time. I dumped everything before uh, and um, so the flavors soak in into the recipe and then you would add the greens at the very end before serving. You toss and you serve. Do you think you could eat this? So if I were to add a half a cup of my edamame beans, I'm adding a whole lot of protein, okay? So the idea is to be familiar and befriend your kitchen. You may have a lot of appliances that are just bored and lonely. <laughs> Use them, an air fryer, a crock pot, and if you're not using them, let go. Get a little form and grill so you can plug it in and you can just use things that are convenient to you. Um, maybe ready to eat meals is what you are more comfortable with because you don't want to cook. So be familiar with the stores around your neighborhood so that you're bringing good quality foods to your house and by having vegetables and fruits available visibly chopped up or there, they're much easier to introduce into your everyday living. Questions? Sir? 
I did, sir. No vinegar. I added lemon. Instead of using vinegar, I replaced the acid by lemon juice. Uh, you can use this with uh, rice vinegar. It's really neutral in flavor. So if you're not a really vinegar fan, this is probably the lightest one, uh, depending on what you like. If you use wine vinegar or raspberry vinegar, they'll give you a different flavor to your salad. But this mixture is just with, or uh, with uh, lemon juice. Yes? So depending on your nutritional needs, usually a meal, and depending who you read, you should be getting anywhere from like maybe 70 grams of protein a day, okay? And that depends on your gender, your muscle mass, your activity level, and many other things. So, um, you know, to be a complete meal, you want to have a representation of at least four food groups. And you want to have a proportion of protein, carbohydrate, and fat. That's what makes a healthy meal. So in this case, we have here maybe two cups of spinach, about one cup of shredded vegetables, a half a cup of blueberries, a fourth of a cup of um, nuts will have fat. The olive oil has fat. An avocado will add fat. And then the protein could come from the nuts and the edamame. And when you talked about the fish, yes. is, is that and so the idea is whatever works for you. Uh, we live in Missouri, so having fresh fish here is kind of hard to come by. Um, you can buy frozen fish, fresh fish, or processed fish. You have to be, well, it, this one's processed, right? So it's processed because it's been packaged, right? And it probably has other things in it. Uh, it, it has, you know, fish is the first one, water is the second one, sugar and salt. Okay, but I'm going to be consuming maybe two ounces of it, and depending on what your health needs are, um, it has about 10% of sodium, so it's not so much added sodium, and it gives me 14 grams of protein. So do I need to eat the entire package in this salad? Maybe, maybe not. I don't care. I mean, you know, we sometimes tend to do too much. So being able to focus and understand what things you need to measure and what things you can pig out on is so easy. The idea is to focus on what things you need to pig out more. And the green leafies, okay, I brought here, does anybody know what this is? It's a sweet potato. So uh, beta carrot, beta carrot, vitamin A, vitamin D, all of these beta carotenes are really important. So a sweet potato, okay, you can once again uh, poke it and you put it in the microwave in a, in, a paper, in a paper bag with a moist towel or in this little cloth fabric thingies and you put it in the microwave like this for three minutes and you have a baked sweet potato. Oh my gosh, let me chop it up and put it in my salad or let me put some salsa and mm, Greek yogurt and have a baked sweet potato that could be fun. So keep it interesting. Get variety of foods in your system. The more diverse your food, the better nutrition your body's going to get. And the evidence is there. Uh, individuals who consume a diet that is high on ultra processed foods have much more deteriorated cognitive decline compared to those individuals with no prior existing uh, conditions who follow a more Mediterranean plant-based diet. So wherever you are right now, your C-reactive protein, your inflammation levels are caused by a complex system, but food is a major contributor. It could protect you or it can contribute to greater inflammation. So soy could be controversial. What the science and the evidence points out that is it's very healthful. Uh, it's a plant-based protein source that is very high on fiber. The problem with soy is because we live in here, we process a lot of soy byproduct. So when you're looking at the standard American diet, corn and soy are the main source of nutrition for most of our stock, our feed for our animals. And it's used also a lot in processing 
foods. So uh, corn and soy are very healthful, but they are high on omega-6 fatty acids and omega-9 fatty acids. And uh, therefore, our diets tend to be too high on those and not enough of the omega-3s. So like anything or other recommendations, if you are eating vegetarian, but you're still eating really highly processed foods, most likely you're eating way too much soy protein. So it's all coming from the same source. We go back to diversity in your, in your sources. Some people may not be able to do it, but it's, for the most part, it's part of our evidence-based guideline that soy is accepted to eat. Right, One more? One. questions and um, any questions for either Glorious or Alexis. Okay, let me take one more. Yeah. Actually, I have kind of two combined. You did mention a word about calories. About who? Calories. Calories. And, and the last one yeah. Okay, so I love that you brought that up because we were looking and listening to Alexis' presentation and, and when I'm talking about inflammation, aging is one of those things that we cannot control, but we do know obesity or central abdominal fat is highly correlated with greater inflammation. And so we struggle with weight and we may be overweight for different reasons, uh, but the correlation comes and is very evident that the more empty calories, so when we eat eat ultra processed foods. Uh, let me give you an example. This entire salad is probably 300 calories or less. Uh, I don't know if you like Girl Scout cookies. Uh, okay, uh, but maybe three cookies are 200 calories, uh, you know, so thinking of how those calories are packaged. Uh, there are some foods like the example that I gave you of a fourth of a cup, what fits in the small of your hand of nuts, that's about 200 calories too, but they're loaded with nutrition. That's considered a nutrient-dense food. So you need to watch how many you eat if you want to watch your weight as well. Okay, good point. Alex? So organic, the evidence points out that the health benefit of eating more fruits and vegetables is very, very clear and it outweighs uh, whether it's organic or not. Nonetheless, we know that the USDA or the Food and Drug Administration, the USDA, to have the seal of organic is ensuring that that food was produced following very strict guidelines in which at least 95% of the ingredients used for that respect that. So pesticides and chemicals used for um, growing the food. If you can afford it, yay! Uh, if not, just looking at the ingredients um, and making sure that you're steering away from some of those really harmful products. The Eat Well Market at Schnooks is a new concept. Is the only second one in Missouri. And um, what it has, it has a wide variety of organic products, but uh, the criteria for their food is that it will not have artificial flavorings, artificial colors, artificial sweeteners, or man-made hydrogenated fatty acid or hydrogenated uh, trans fats, and one more. So it's kind of a nice concept in which uh, you can come and pretty safely choose anything that won't have some of those uh, elements. So there are coupons outside that you have a $5 off if you're a Schnucks Rewards member. It is only good at this new store. Unfortunately, they're trying to promote it and get more traffic there. So please make sure you're taking a coupon before you leave. Um, and we're gonna be giving you a gift basket uh, with a wonderful uh, $25 gift card too that has been donated by them. I'm eating beef. Is there an age above which these changes won't make any difference at all? So as uh, far as we know, um, there really isn't a, a cutoff, um, kind of like what we mentioned towards the end. Uh, it's never too late to start. So, you know, really whatever keeps your cholesterol under control, um, your um, blood pressure under control is important because if you have that under control, you're likely less likely to have strokes, pulmonary embolism, heart attack, um, all of these things that can impact your risk for other things like dementia. So it's never too late to start. 
And to that note, I want to talk, I mean, I, I don't want to put my hat of a diabetes educator, but really sugar and your levels of blood sugar, so having really high blood sugar or having low blood sugar levels can also affect your cognitive abilities. And so making sure that you're eating properly throughout the day, <laughs> that you're not just doing sweet things because they taste better. When you get older, uh, your taste buds decline, so sweet or strong flavors tend to be more attractive. Depending on medications, your appetite may be disturbed, so it's easier to eat junk food because it's accessible and yummy, but on the other end, you're, not, uh, you're ca causing more harm to your situation than benefit. There was a question right here. Yeah. Sure. No. No, it was really just a matter of I knew I liked dancing. I don't like freestyle dancing. I like cohesive dancing where everyone's doing the same thing. So I just kind of Googled uh, what was out there. It took me to a Facebook group in St. Louis, and that's kind of how I found it. So it's really just a matter of keywords, finding things that you like, and then there's tons of, Eventbrite is a good place to start for sure. They have events constantly uh, posted that are local. You type in keywords of things that you like to do and it'll show you events in your area that fit that criteria. Um, so Google would be your friend on that one. Also contacting YMCA uh, or OAA, there's different programs out there that are catered for seniors that can help you also find places. Sorry. Oasis, yeah. Yeah, county libraries do it depending on the branch. Uh, so it's really seeing where you go. Yeah. We'll come here and then we'll come back. Yes. It's true. Well, what do you want to say about tofu? <laughs> do you like it? I know. Well, tofu is soy-based, okay? It's very, very f common for people that are vegetarian and very ethnic foods, like Asian. And it comes in different forms. So there's hard tofu, soft tofu, and there's like fluid tofu that you could use for so many different products. And like my quinoa, it's kind of bland doesn't taste like much and depending on the texture so you have to be really wise at what you're pairing it with so that it can absorb the flavors of your of your preparations and this is where you know herbs and spices so turmeric uh, ginger cinnamon we curry oh, all these things are always going to enhance a lot of aroma so look at all the things that you can produce in your body when you're cooking something that smells really good just the smell and the thought of it can help secrete like 30 percent of your gastric juices before you even put the food in your mouth that's when digestion starts so using aromatics makes it flavorful and 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 just more appetizing make sure be careful of blends because some blends will not have the nutrition label and some blends you will not know what's in it. So say lemon pepper, you're like, well, it's lemon and pepper. It was very high on sodium. Um, Lori seasoning, an eighth of a teaspoon has like a third of the sodium you need for the entire day. So you have to be conscious about what you're using for seasoning. Dash, Mrs. Dash is very safe, yeah. Dark chocolate is wonderful, 70% dark. <laughs> Lots of antioxidants. So we'll come to over here in the orange, yes. Um, when you're talking about sugar, there's a lot of sugar in fruits. Uh, is that considered, do you have to count that as your sugar? No. So when it's a, na when it's a, when it's a food like this, this is natural sugar. Even if I cut it and squeeze the juice out of it, it's still a natural sugar. No. You will count it in, say if I had honey, although it's a natural sugar, I would be adding it. That's an added sugar. Table sugar. Um, if you're thinking of um, fruits, we don't count. We want you to eat the American Cancer Association and looking at anti-inflammatory diet, it's up to nine to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, unlike five a day that we know. Five a day is three servings of fruit, of vegetables and two pieces of fruit. Is there any difference between organic, natural, sugar cane, or refined? 
Well, the name says it. One is refined and one is organic. So yes, there is difference between them. Um, the one that is organic sugar cane, you're still going to be adding it to food. So you have to be, it's a better quality sugar, but it's still an added sugar. So you're going to use a measuring device and use the least amount possible. Okay. There are artificial sweeteners as well. Um, if you like them, go for it. If not, try not to use them. But uh, it's up to your flip. Yeah. Right. I don't want to interrupt, but one, maybe one more question, and then we'll be available in the atrium for any other questions. And I will, we will be emailing everybody. If questions come up, please feel free to let us know. Yes. I want to what the American contact bridge league, which is having a game, three-day game this week or the next week, which raises Would you repeat it so that he can hear? Ah, break. Thank you for sharing. So he, just to repeat, um, he had mentioned that there is a bridge association that Yes, Bridge League, where it's $10 a game. Um, you g can compete and get involved if it's something you're interested in. So I'm sure if you have more questions, feel free to ask him. Uh, we're going to be hanging out on the other side so you guys can get a sample of the recipe. And yeah. I don't know if Monica wants to. But before to you go, we have yeah. raffle. So thank you. A, a lot of great questions. Thank you, Glorice. Thank you, Alexis. Very great information. And thank you all for coming.